you can tell by my green shirt what my job was. Um, I was a referee. Um, I offered to, offered to do terrain modeling for them, but <laughs> it was really flat. I would have the easiest job at WRTC. Um, so my itinerary was uh, quite, quite complicated, but without going through all this, uh, my wife and I got to Berlin uh, a few days before. Um, that was a good move because we avoided all the traffic stuff and gave a lot of buffer for us. Uh, we even had time uh, to take a one-day trip to the beach in Poland, which is only two hours from Berlin. Uh, we spent eight days in Wittenberg, and after... Uh, there were so many people that were interested in going to Poland that I ended up organizing a trip uh, to Wrocław. Uh, there were 19 of us that went. And then a smaller group uh, went to Krakow, and then a smaller group to Warsaw, and so on. And as uh, um, uh, was pointed out, we also went to uh, a Lithuanian Hamfest. But um, I'll show you a couple pictures of Berlin just to kind of break up the pace. Uh, you've seen enough pictures of Wittenberg. Um, if you ever have a chance to go to Berlin, do it. It's a fascinating place. Um, I have memories of Berlin back from the old days in 1970 was the first time I went. When there, when there was a Berlin, where then there was a wall and East Germany and West Germany were two different worlds and that has completely changed. Um, this is the famous TV tower, which is the former East Germany, Alexander Platz. Uh, this is Reichstag, which is now the German parliament. Um, this is where Hitler spoke uh, on the steps of the Reichstag. This was in complete ruins in 19, before 1990. It's now the parliament building, and that glass dome was added <clears throat> later, uh, and you can actually go up there and walk up steps and spiral your way up that glass dome. So it's a, it's a fascinating uh, place. We never had time to do that. Um, um, there's, uh, this is uh, one of the very few places where you can still see the wall that was left there. Uh, it was in front of the uh, secret police building. Um, there's an amazing display of history of Germany during the uh, Nazi era. And uh, I mean, you could spend a week in that museum. It's truly fascinating. Uh, they had an outdoor display on just one year in 1933 of Hitler and everything that was going on at that time. So uh, it's a great place. Um, the wall, of course, is down. Wherever the, where the wall stood, there's a, always a marker. So you can go around the city, and you, this, this indicates the location of the wall. That happens to be right through the middle of a street. You can see the center lane marking. So um, there's nothing left. I, there was Somebody else showed a picture here of Checkpoint Charlie, which is sort of a tourist trap place now, but this was very, very different uh, from what it was in 1990. Uh, I went through Checkpoint Charlie in 1971 and uh, by car, and I was there a second time by foot. So um, this is Potsdamer Platz. That used to be a real s-hole, as they, people say, uh, before. All rebuilt uh, modern buildings. It's now this was the one uh, German. This was the train stop on the East German side, and uh, we went to a multimedia presentation at the Reichstag at sunset. Um, really, really impressive uh, display of uh, German history uh, and the, the whole Nazi era and all the amazing uh, reconstruction that's gone on in, in Germany. Uh, it's it's a very impressive job of, of how much effort and money uh, went into uh, the uh, reconstruction of Berlin and all of East Germany. Um, you can hardly tell the difference. I mean, this, this, is, this used to be East Germany. This is, of course, another shot of, of Wittenberg. Um, <clears throat> so we got there, uh, uh, we got there uh, actually a day early. I ran into Paul Bittner, W0AIH. Uh, I'm sure most of you know who he is. Uh, uh, Paul is a Lutheran minister. So my first question was, so how many times have you been here before, Paul? And he says, I've never been to Wittenberg. And I'm a Lutheran minister. And Paul has lives in Minnesota. He's got, what, 42 towers? Something like that. Uh, some amazing amount, number of towers. 
And he does his own tower climbing. As you, he's, he's well into his 80s. He, you can see he's a pretty sprightly gentleman. And so he said, yeah, I was, uh, I was just up on that tower. I had to climb that tower, you can see on the right side. It had 284 steps. I counted every one of those. <laughs> so here's a few guys you, you, can, you recognize. Fred, K1VR, had a, took a job as a, uh, in the, uh, as a um, reception area in the orange shirt. Um, and of course, WRTC is a big social event. And uh, um, a lot of people, here's uh, our breakfast area, K9PG in his <laughs> usual pose. Doing the gentry. The gentry, right, right, right. Um, so uh, the, uh, the bar was always dominated by the Russians. Um, that, that's like 14150.3. Um, that's RA1A and uh, RA9USU. Um, so they were, uh, now my, uh, my team uh, were uh, the Slovak team. Uh, There's two Slovak teams. They were the number two Slovak team. Uh, OM3RM on the left, OM2VL. Um, I was really excited by the fact that they, I was chosen uh, to be their referee because uh, I speak Polish and I speak Russian. And if you know those two languages, Slovak, I can understand about 60% of Slovak. So I thought, great, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'll be able to hear it, understand what they're talking about. Uh, the only thing is I, their names, uh, Tibor and Laszlo, are not Slovak names. They're, those are very Hungarian names. So I said, so are you guys Slovak? or?" I don't get it. He said, no, no, we're Hungarians. And so much for that idea, right. Um, so that, that was it. Uh, TB, by the way, on the left, he's the co-owner of uh, OM power amplifiers, um, along with Josef, OM3GI, I think. So TB is on the business side, and Josef is on the technical, on the technical side. So. Uh, um, here we are at the site, uh, the support teams. I, but by the way, I, I was always struck when I was there how, how closely they followed the Boston model of WRTC. Even the, even the color of the shirts matched. Uh, so they, they didn't take too many chances on the organization. So the, the volunteers were great. These guys had been there since Wednesday. Uh, one, one thing that struck me is that the difference between guys from Europe and guys from outside Europe. The guys in Europe, like these guys, uh, came in their station wagons, loaded up with gear. I mean, they had everything you can imagine in that car, whereas guys like, you know, US guys were limited by uh, two, two or four suitcases. So there's clearly a, an advantage if you're uh, in the same continent. And this was the support team. They, they'd been camping out since Wednesday. It was very dry in Germany in July and very hot. <clears throat> and this was the grassy field. Next to that was a potato field. You can see by the grass that it was, uh, there had not been any rain for a long time. Uh, just before the contest, uh, uh, TB took a nap. Uh, the, uh, and then here's uh, Lassie uh, operating. Uh, both these guys, by the way, are. Uh, they're operators at OM8 Alpha, Oscar Maidea Alpha. Um, big, big station, biggest station in uh, Slovakia, contest station. Um, and this was my operating position. Um, I had my headphones, my audio level adjuster, my left, right, both. And like Dennis pointed out, the, the speeds were 38. These guys were 38 to 40. Uh, they slowed down a little bit on Sunday. And at first, it was kind of overwhelming, you know, 38 words a minute, 40 blasting away. But after a couple hours, uh, I actually was able to copy both signals on both ears, uh, which was kind of neat. Uh, I have to say that a couple comments on, on operating. First of all, these guys were incredibly good runners. Um, I, uh, the first six, seven hours, I was staring at the monitors, you know, making sure that they logged everything, at least the way I heard it. They got calls right away, first call. And they very rarely did they ask for repeats. Um, I was very impressed. Um, 
and uh, so let me and but 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 it became apparent after a while that there, there's something missing here because number one, every time they went to phone, they would just kind of pick a frequency, and call CQ, and after about 10 or 15 minutes, their, their faces would kind of sour and then they go right back to CW. So I mean, I've done enough, uh, enough uh, multi-mode contests to know that you can get some amazing, amazing rates on phone. It's, it's all a matter of timing and picking the right time and, and getting out of there while you're ahead and not waiting for the rate to drop. And so their operating strategy, oops, oh shit. Their operating strategy, I won't comment anymore, but I felt kind of frustrated because I thought I could do a lot better than them. <laughs> and I'm not in it. Uh, these were my two guys, my, my personal favorites. Uh, I'm easy to pick them because they won last time. So, um, and the, uh, the, uh, the closing and opening ceremonies in the hall, which I think you've seen the pictures of, and, uh, and the winners. Uh, and as uh, somebody said, uh, they've been in top 10, what, twice now, I think, the Lithuanians? So it wasn't a real surprise, uh, I guess, but I certainly would have not have picked them. Uh, Dennis and I and Fred K1VR had the opportunity to uh, talk to one of those guys, and meet him in person, and spend some time with them in Lithuania. So uh, I was trying to get at the essence of what made him so good, why they were so, how they were able to maintain that lead. And I, I really didn't, in the end, get a real sense for how that happened. Uh, but if you look at their numbers, they have very high SSB totals. Um, their, uh, very, uh, their CW totals are high. I think they had the highest country total. If you look at pictures of their station set up, they had a screen that just tracked multipliers. Uh, so they were obviously, do and, they were, and someone pointed out, they were very diligent and focused, apparently. Obviously, I wasn't there. So uh, they, they clearly deserve to win. And the uh, N0AX and, and company uh, did their uh, usual musical thing, Dayton style at the end, which was pretty cool. And uh, RA0AM here. So that, that's it. Uh, I'm also looking forward to uh, 2022. Thanks. <laughs>